Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial section. My name is Godwin and in this tutorial we will look at the design of a folded dipole antenna at a zonating frequency of 2.5 GHz. The folded dipole comprises of a dipole and the ends of the dipole are connected to another dipole leg with no feed. So what I want to say is that for the folded dipole, you have a dipole with a feed inside it and another dipole separated a distance away from our main dipole and the ends connected. So let's start with the design. We are designing at a resonating frequency of 2.5 GHz. So first, I will introduce my cylinder for the dipole. I'll make sure it is on the origin so I can rename it dipole. And make sure it is at the origin. Zero comma zero comma. Um, the radius of our cylinder will be zero point zero zero four mm. 0.04 mm and the entire height of the dipole will be lambda by 2 that will give me 60 mm let's increase our dipole radius a little bit it is too thin for the eye to see good so this is all we have, but we want it to divide our region into two. So we take minus 60 divided by 2 of it to divide our region. We can do fit to all so that we can see good. So from here, we will copy and paste. Control V. So after that, I can change this one to... Um, Order half, order half, and move it mm, away from our main dipole. Let's say we want to move it away by units of 10. 10 is even much. Okay, 10 is quite okay. This is the other half, and I can go ahead. This is my dipole. I can paste it again and change this to gap. Now, dipole selects this one, and gap also selects that one, meaning that they have the same dimension and they lie at the same point in space. So, what we can do is that we can adjust it. The gap of our dipole is um, 0 0.9. 0 point, um, so we let it divide the origin into 2. So minus 0 0.9 divided by what? 2. Alright, so now our gap will select this part of it. And you have other dipole leg. So we can now subtract the gap from our actual dipole. So command gap and subtract. Press OK. So you can see that we now have a gap over here to support our pot. So now we are left with connecting the edges so with the connection of the edges
camera and cool so with the connection of the edges we'll be using um sections so i will make sure object is taped over here go to modular search for surface section and xy now i can rename my section as bend so we'll be having bend one actually a bend one so we can move the um we need to undo some few steps okay so now we can um, set our coordinate system relative to where we want to work. Good. Now we selected our object so we can draw the section. We can choose the section part of it. We want the section to be as XY. Okay, now we can rename it that is where we are going to introduce our bend so bend one cool so from, so from here we will introduce our three point arc double click we can select by name we have bend um and polyline bend and polyline control bend you do okay you can go to draw sweep along path and do okay we see that we've created our bend over here you do same with the other one so you do f which automatically selects by face so now you can select here change the working coordinates as we did earlier so create working coordinate relative offset and do it over here from here we can go to select by object let's double click this create a section and go surface create a section x y so now we can call our section bend to bend to so we are going to create um, the bend over here so what we do we need a three point arc again start from here move to the center move backward good so now we will select by name polygon 2 control bend 2 we do okay we go to draw sweep along path good so now we have our two bends so we need to connect them so with the connection we will turn a little bit so that we can see all the points select this Um, I need to escape do it again click 
click on the polyline select type circle um, the diameter will be 0 0.4 um, height um, let's assume 8 and that's it we connected the ends very beautiful so we can do same for the other end too so i will zoom in I'll zoom in first of all f select by face change the coordinate system offset after the offset we need to select by object o for that so we can select this um, create a section this time around i'll call my section bend 3 All right, cool. So I'll introduce my three um, point arc. I'll select by name, so polygon four, bend three. Selected successfully. So we can go to draw, sweep along path. Press OK. We have it now. All right. F for face, picking face. Change coordinate. Offset. So we now have um, the coordinate. So we we'll change to select by object by pressing O on our keyboard. Select the object, create a section. X, Y. Call it bend four. After that. We need a three point arc. Good, so we select by name polygon five, bend four. Press OK, draw, sweep along path. OK, so now. We have um, um, oh, this one was longer than the other. Okay, so let's undo. Hmm. All right, so
that is all I got. Polygon 5, can select by name, Polygon 5, bend through it, bend 4, Polygon 5, bend 4, draw Slip along that. Good. So everything is on point now. Select the polygon, circle, diameter zero point four, height, and it will do. We we'll join them correctly. So now we will join all the stuff that we have. So select this control polygon everything that we have sorry we want to check and see if everything is selected all right so everything is selected so i can unite them to form one thing good so i can change the material now i'll use pc good forget the errors i'll use pc from here i won't reduce my pot so that is the pot I'll rename it pot um, to assign a citation to it and pot this means we are feeding the signal can be voltage or current to it to define with no error i will change the color make it a bit transparent good now this will fit well change this is our actual dipole with bends and another dipole without a citation so we can change the plane to sy and um, introduce our radiation box but before i forget um before I forget, I would, oh, okay, I've already assigned material to it. And we can change the coordinates, use our main coordinates, yes, the global. Because we are done with these relative ones. They helped us to introduce the bend and um, the curves. So now, I'll assign a box to it. I 
I'll call it radiation box. So rad box for short. Track up the dimensions. 60 is too short for me, so I'll do 150, 80, 80. So I'll get minus 80 divided by 2. Minus 80 divided by 2.5. We have minus 150 divided by 2. Okay, now apply. We can't see the antenna, which is not advisable for designs. You should see how it, it is placed inside. So I'll do it for less opaque check how my antenna has been placed inside can rotate it so okay everything is fine so now our assign boundary to my box radiation okay now now check citations defined okay boundaries defined so you will check each FSS for what is left. So validation, we are left with analysis setup. Okay, cool. So now come here. Advanced 2.5. That is our resonating frequency. 25. Calculating too fast linear count to step step from one and that four for me and that four is fine so it's a step off can preview the band I really really take band Right, so I'll go to HFSS again, says everything is right. So now we can analyze. Alright, so simulation is done. So we can look at a resource. We plot the S11. Um, okay. So this is what we get. It happens sometimes. Um, we use a minus 10 dB mark to check the performance of um, um, the bandwidth and where it cuts, it cuts um, the, the care, but 4.27 and 4.3 what we should note is that this is outside a uh, resonating frequency or the working this is a spectrum but this was supposed to be a 2.5 and this can be achieved by performing optimization it is not really wrong but we can alter um, the dimensions of the device to pull this closer or even bring this step this depth um, beyond minus 10 so with that we will look at them um, i will take one antenna and perform optimization on it for you people to see so we can go ahead and plot uh, both the standing wave ratio it is plotted with no unit so you change the unit from 0 to y scaling from 0 to let's say 10 with unit spacing of 
one. All right, so we use the two as reference over here to we can compute the bandwidth. That is the difference over here and here. And we can go ahead, introduce a finance year setup. zero to three sixty with a step of ten minus one eighty with a step of ten So now we can plot the 3D polar plot and from the 3D polar plot we can plot our radiation patterns to 3D polar plot to check gain, gain total dB um, and do new report. Alright, this is how it is supposed to be and the gain is also accepted for omnidirectional antenna so we can see that power is mostly distributed around this area and the e e field is distributed in this direction and in this direction so the, the power distribution over here is very 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 low and um, ideally it should be zero but this this isn't um theory this is practical so we won't achieve um zero like that but something closer to zero that is the green so from minus 7.5 so minus 7.5 is really closer to zero so from this we can know the the angles that we can cut in order to get our a plane as i said our a plane is in this direction and the h plane is in this direction so for the for the um a plane I should cut phi at theta zero and for the um for the for the H plane I should cut theta at zero so I can go ahead Go ahead, our field radiation pattern gain total dB. This is where we have theta to be the principal and family. We won't plot all of phi, we plot just zero degrees of phi. You can do a new report as you can see. That is omnidirectional so this is how the eight plane should be as i said as i showed you in the polar plot so where is the polar plot this is how the eight plane is distributed so you get like two dumbbells that's what all right so this is the a plane as you can see gain phi gain theta db change phi to theta to phi plus just theta and zero theta to ninety sorry all right so, so you can see this is the h plane and the other one is the e plane thank you